Hi guys, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to use a classic rock, a very common classic rock bass line, which I'll first teach you on the piano. It would normally be played on the bass guitar. So we learn that in the left hand of our piano, this one. Once we learn that very groovy riff, which divides the beat well, a lot of rests, a lot of interesting positions of the notes. Once we learn that, we're going to work on our hand independence, but not just play random stuff in the right hand, like melodies and just holding chords. We will play very sort of iconic, classic rock style licks, phrases and... Uh, chord patterns in the right hand or, or the treble clef as we call it. So what I'm going to tell you will also remind you if you listen to a lot of the stuff from the 80s or the early 90s, it may remind you of stuff like that glam rock, bands like Toto, Bon Jovi and not only bands which use piano for their performances like Journey and uh, Kansas but also rock bands like standard 80s glam rock bands. Okay, so... Even if you haven't heard classic rock, I would suggest go go back in time, rewind the clock and listen to some of this awesome music which can get your, you know, headbanging skills going. So before we start, it'll be great to just go through all the topics which we are going to learn in this lesson. First of all, we are going to develop our hand independence using four variations which I have planned in the right hand versus the same thing in the left hand, which is the bass riff. Then we are going to learn and develop the ability to play the pulse in the right hand. The way the listener's head moves to the music is called the pulse. So we figure out a way to play that pulse and play the riff in the left hand. Normally, we play the pulse in the left hand and then stuff in the right hand. So I thought this lesson would be interesting to figure out the other way where you do the pulse in the right. Okay, then we look at a very famous mixolydian chord progression, which I talk a lot of in my lessons. I will link a few of those in the description. So check that out. We are also going to develop our accents, accented phrases over a, a standard time signature like 4 4. So it's not going to be da 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 da. It's not going to be predictable. That's what makes rock music so exciting. So accents and accented phrases using some arpeggios. I'm also going to teach you a fusion lick, a lick which you could say is a bit Indian in nature. So do stick around till the end. You'll uh, For all of you fusion lovers, I'm going to fuse an Indian lick into this classic rock progression. And all through the lesson, we are going to cover sc scale theory as well as chord theory. We need cadences and the circle of fifths, the usual music theory stuff, right? Get a pen and paper out as well. That'll also help. And all of these notes which are used for the lesson are available on our Patreon. The notes will Im imply the theory, diagrams which I draw and of course good old notation which I've handwritten for the most part in this lesson and uh, I think my handwriting is quite good you can follow it quite well and do consider giving the video a like or a thumbs up as we call it a share a subscribe and leave us a comment with something you'd like me to teach in the future it's your comments and suggestions which have actually kept this channel growing and also feel free to hit that bell icon for regular notifications let's get cracking guys so first off, let's learn the bass riff. So I've chosen a very guitar friendly scale E. So let me play it for you and then break it down. Very few notes, I guess three, four if you want to count an octave. Let's play it to, to the speed. So with a bass riff, it's important to look at it, yes, from the point of view of notes, but also from the point of view of the intervals, because that's how it works when you're composing a bass line. So this will be 1, 1, 5, 7 flat, octave, 1, octave, 5, 7 flat, octave, dum, pa, dun, de, da, sa, sa, pa, ni, sa, sa, sa. Bani sa 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 bani sa 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 bani. Usually the one of the bar will be a deeper bass, which is the lower note, and then they play around like a, a common bass line could even be built, you know, using just with the pinky and the thumb playing octaves. That itself could make something very catchy, like something like this, you know. 
But what I've composed here is pam pa dum di da dum pa pa dim pa o pam pa pam be re pum pa pa re re dum ta dum de re dum. Okay, let's do it slowly together. Dum ta dum de re dum pa pa re. Now you may argue which scale did this riff come from? It's come from the E mixolydian scale, which is like the E major scale. With a flat seven, right? Not, not that note, D sharp. It's with a D, which is the flat seven of E. So flat seven means you take the major scale seven, which is D sharp, and drop it down a step, or what they call as a semitone. So the riff again on the mixolydian, and mixolydian is almost always used for a rock riff or a rock bass line. It's, it, it's very rare that you're going to hear a. Major seventh in a rock song. It'll be that, and then maybe the third would either be minor or or major, depending on the the lyrics and the vibe of the song. Okay, that's the riff. I'd like you to give a nice lift off at the E. You could even say oh if you wish. So this riff, I'm not going to change for this entire lesson with all our four variations. It's just going to be this, right? Let's move forward now. Now the variations are essentially what the right hand is going to do. Let's look at variation one, which is pretty much just pulses. So you're going to do these two chords. B D E and then B C sharp E as blocks. So B D E B C sharp E do 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 those are your chords. So you could probably do them as quarter notes. So you could go. Either play them four times. Pam pam pa change. Pa and then change. You may argue, what are these chords? Well, it all depends on the bass. That's like an E dominant seventh, a voicing of that chord. Like I said in this lesson, these are very common ways in which people play these chords in in rock music. They may not be playing it as. Is more pop ballad or classical, so that's the voicing for like a rock song. And then I'm just dropping it down there. Creates a bit of mystery. It also adds that major sixth vibe. So you could start off with this. Keep a simple bass, playing E. You can sing something. You get comfortable with the right. Once you get that, try to play this with the riff. That's your first goal. Get the pulse of those chords. Two bars of each chord, so as a pulse. So pulse also means the way our head or the listener's head move, or the body moves naturally in a periodic manner to the music we play. So as you can see, my head is moving in a certain way at a speed, and the right hand is pretty much just emulating that, which I think we as musicians have to be able to do when we are playing music. If we are not able to do that and feel that, I don't think the audience ever will. So there we go. Move your head, and 
replicate or copy copy that simulate that with your hand playing these two chords so bang now some people like to absorb the concept of independence by notating both the clefs treble clef and the bass clef right hand left hand and then seeing where the two hands align to do that i would encourage you yes fine write it down but then start off really slow and count 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 so we analyze the bass riff there are lot of the ands being used right 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 so that causes the issue with the right hand and the left hand integration because the left hand's playing at the off beats a lot of the off beats while the right hand's only going on they are not really you know coordinating with each other you know they are doing their own thing this is doing the pulse this is doing a groove but together they come together and make people dance so it's important that you do both and that's what this exercise is geared for and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and the pulse going sometimes it's good to i don't know things like closing your eyes will help just to feel those notes feel those beats moving past you it helps sometimes to close your eyes yeah right and you never know and, and maybe you have a particular musical expression which you do with your face or do something with your eyes whatever works for you you know you need to find something which is helping you so even if it means just closing your eyes or just making a strange face i don't know what i am doing but it comes out naturally so that's just a way to concentrate so beyond all the logic and the math behind the two hands integrating i think there's a There, there's a mental side to this as well and when you practice this you may struggle on day 1 you may not ever get it on day 1 but you've put in an effort you've put in like a solid amount of practice so that is going to give you a reward in the future just like an exercise just a, just like a sport or a physical exercise so the the advice i give students and you guys watching this would be practice it to a point that your mind kind of fries itself up it's like almost fried right but it's not it's not like burnt out so to speak it's just fried up so saturated and now that's it for the day you can do something else listen to some songs take your dog out for a walk do anything else forget playing the piano for that day but you need to play so that your mind is a little bit fried up as i say okay but you've not got it so here's the thing right when you sleep what's going to end up happening is the subconscious mind will start working on this process of mastering and getting what you wanted to get out of so it's important for you to visualize yourself playing it you know just imagine okay pam 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 that's the bass and ting 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 visualize both hands achieve your goal you right you need to visualize your goal and the next morning it's going to get better or you may actually get it in the next morning okay so don't forget to uh, take your breaks don't fry don't burn out rather saturate your mind fry it up but then take a break sleep have a good night sleep let the subconscious work on the process and then the next morning or the next evening whenever you practice don't take a long break after that you don't want to give up take like a one week off and then try then you're back to square one you want to do it the next morning with the same intensity and you'll realize what took you like an hour is now taking you like 5 minutes to just muscle back together so this is block chords in the right hand 
right so i'm going to conclude this part of the lesson series we are going to have four variations in the right hand the first one is this block structure the next one is i'm going to teach you the accents accent groupings which will be with the riff as well that's going to be a little tricky but a lot of fun then we look at some standard glam rock stuff played on synths and guitars and stuff like a little bit of theory to transpose it you can actually play that together then a nice fusion lick that same thing right so i thought i'll divide this into a few parts and um, yes stick around in the next part we are going to do arpeggios in groups of three accents basically and we'll also look at a turn around which is very common and then back like so lots coming up guys uh, the the next part will be available so do check it out it it's there on our youtube channel itself so what you want to do is hit that bell if you hit the bell uh, some of you already know how regularly we put up our youtube lesson so hit that bell you'll get a notification hit the subscribe to stay tuned and don't forget to share the video give it a like a thumbs up and uh, get the notes on patreon let's move on to the next part